I hope all is safe, Mr. Junjunwala. It's good, good to be talking to you after a while. Uh, Same here. Yeah, thank you. I, I just wonder, Mr. Junjunwala, I have the liberty of hearing some of your thoughts in a recent interview that you did, so I'll pick up some bit from there as well. And I'll try and put in some bit of technical questions as well, since this is a, a program for technical analysts per se. But I just want to start off with something that I heard you say the other day, that do you think that we are a start of uh, 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 an economic cycle and a market cycle the, the way we were back in maybe 2002, 2003? I mean, I don't, uh, I mean, I won't say that exactly 2003, but we are somewhere like that. At least technically, the market surely is. And the fact is that corporate profits to GDP in India are at the lowest ever, which was the case in 2002-03. Right? In 2002-03, the most the valuation of the entire market were very depressed. Now, certain section of the market has got very good valuations, but largely valuations are depressed, in my opinion. So we could say we are in some kind of similarity like 2002-03. I surely believe that India is on the verge of a new economic cycle, a new economic recovery, right? And I'm very bullish on the markets. OK. Um, would Sorry. So would you believe, uh, Mr. Junjunwala, that the markets could do well despite this whole cacophony for the last 12 months about how the economy is not doing well, but the market is going one way? I mean, how would you would you believe that even if the economy doesn't do as well, which, which it well could, uh, the markets could still continue to be healthy? See, Neeraj, it's darkest before the dawn, right? And there are too many indicators to show. Technically, typically, before the start of a long book cycle, the bull cycle, you have a deep fall, you know, like we had in 2001 after September 11th, right? And then the rise, the index that we got after 2001, uh, September 11th, never came back, right? And, but the market took time after that. And then, you know, the rise, the first rise is always treated with great skepticism. And I believe that, very simply put, and I look at things very broadly, I think people are underestimating the change that is come, that has come out in India, and which will slowly accentuate. I believe this year we may dip 10%, 11%, 9%, 8%, I don't know. But next year, I think we will re, re you know, we will be at the same level as 2019-20. So if we did 9% this year, I think we'll become 9% next year. So then the economy will be at 2019-20 levels. And after that, I see no reason why India should not grow 6, 8, 10. And corporate profits also, you know, really grow well. And there is vast underexposure to equity. There is a huge savings in India. We have created the institutions and a structure to attract money to equity, both Indian and foreign. So I see no reason why we're not going to a bull market. See, I see a vision of India which is vastly different from a lot of people. And I reserve, and I reserve the right to be wrong. And remember one thing that stock market, as Mr. Buffet says, you know, if the stock market was to be about the past, the librarians and the historians would have been the richest. And if the markets had to be about the immediate GDP growth, then the economists would have been the richest. So I'm, that's my opinion. I reserve the right to be wrong. You know, I see, uh, I will do things as I see them. Of course, yeah. But having your thought is important, Mr. Junjunwala. And can you just, uh, maybe I can briefly just ask you, uh, what do you mean when you say that you see a vision of India which is vastly different than the others? Because people don't, I believe India will grow 10% by 2024 25 Nobody believes that. So I think, see, I, I, I believe innately in India's skills is democracy and its people, hmm. right? What we have to do is, as, as Smith, that uh, economic said, we have to create, and I'm not theoretician, we have to, as we create ease of doing business, and we create, with every passing year, we are building a better democracy. We are building a better social welfare system, better ability for the enrichment of our people's ability. Right, and I'm no tradition, let me tell you one thing. So people are underestimating that what what Jandhan, what GST, what Rera, what, you know, what, uh, I mean, uh, IBC, then you have labor reform, now you have agriculture reform. There is a big boom, I think, in, in, in I think India will, 
you know, add at least 25 to 30 billion of um, uh, software exports every year. I think that will unleash at least 20 billion dollar purchasing power in India. Then I think in pharma, India is going to be one of the pharma leaders of the world. So I see no reason, you know, and I think if, if once we create conditions, foreign capital will just pour into this country. Right? There is so much capital available in the world. If we can ensure 8%, you know, return on capital, your sovereign funds are ready to put any kind of money. So I envisage all this is happening. And see, this is a journey, it's a process. It's not going to start on one day, it's not going to end on one day. But it's going to get speed as time passes, is my belief. Got it. Uh, I know you mentioned that this is not maybe similar to 2002, 2003, but somewhere there. Can I ask you a follow up question? You are a buyer for the long term. Your balance sheet can handle large hiccups as well. Would you reckon that this is a smooth journey until that 10% growth, say FY24, FY25, or could it have very large variances? I'm not, see, 10 is not sacrosanct. It could be 8. Yeah. It could be up to 10 and 20. But I'm thinking we are going to see an upward base growth level in India, which is going to be very good. And no journey is linear. There are going to be hiccups, there are going to be okay. difficulties. There are going to be doubts. If it could be very easy, then nobody would, everybody would make money here. It would be very easy yeah. to make money. So there are, you have to have belief, but I, I have, my feeling is we will get there. Okay. In the opening remark, Mr. Jinjinwala, you, made, you mentioned that uh, technically as well, we are set up for a large move upwards. This is a, I mean, all the participants are here waiting your thoughts on how do you look at maybe the technicals, market technicals in the charts as well, if you do? Can you speak a bit about that? See, I I don't you I use technicals. I think they are important. What is technicals? They are price formations. And they are a, they say that the, the past price formations are indicator of the future. But I look at them, I think they are important, but I look at them on a very broad basis. I look at breadth, I look at you know. When anything rises, how much does rise is retained? Then I look at what I would call is behavioral science, not by reading books on theory, but just looking there when markets rise and people are skeptical or not. Right? So the market has risen with good volume, with great skepticism. One by one, all parts of the market are participating. Shares are gaining, you know, and if shares rise 40% in five days, there is exhaustion. Markets are rising, market sharing, individual shares are rising, they are breathing, then they are going into corrections, then other part of the market is rising. So all these indicators indicate that there is a long way to go, then there is not leverage is not building up as the markets have gained. That's another important technical indicator. So I look at technicals in a very, very broad. Everything in the market is indicative. Nothing is conclusive except price. Okay, uh, just looking at the price, though, Mr. Jinjinwala, and trying to focus a little bit on the near term before we move on to your thoughts on the reforms as well. Uh, do you reckon? I mean, is there a feeling that maybe we have run up a bit too much, and and could the near term concerns like maybe India-China issue, which is there and alive and kicking, could that or the U.S. elections have some bit of bearing on the near term? Any thoughts on that? We need a good stocks always remain expensive. Asian prints is always remain expensive stock. I was talking to Mr. Udor Kotak, he was saying in his history, experience, you know, Kotak Bank has given 35% return in dollar terms from 2002. It has always remained expensive. So good things in life don't come cheap. As long as there is skepticism and there is no mass participation and build up of leverage. And mm. see, the black swan events can happen any day. Right? I don't think... And look at it, yeah, market has gone from 7,500 to nearly 12,000, look at the amount of skepticism and nobody is ready to participate. All TV channels are only anxious to broadcast, oh, how much market is this and when is it going to correct? All the TV... So, personal feeling is, if suppose the index has stopped out today, or maybe it'll top out at 12,000 or 12,200 or 500. After that, it makes a range. Say it's topped out today. If it makes a range base say, between 10,500 and 11,500, the bull market is very much alive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, market is going to correct at some point. Market is going to pause. The question is when it will pause. But that pausing and making of a narrow range, right, does not mean that the bull market has come to an end or I think it's only a pause. I won't be surprised if market makes a range and stops going up. What's wrong? In that individual scripts will keep performing and changing. Right. You, and as long as market, as long as the fall, as long as the fall is not with too much of breath, bad breath. Okay. Uh, you you reckon that the the base could broaden? We've already seen it, it in bits, and then there have been measures being taken, which everybody talks about, like for example, the multi-cap fund measures, etc. I mean, whether it's right or wrong is debatable, but it's happening. Do you reckon it could broaden its base even more while we are in this range? Multi-cap stocks or not comes or not. If I'm right about it being a bull market, it will broaden, huh. and it will broaden. It. And the multi-cap fund is not going to base on which it will broaden. It's natural. Yeah, sure. The first thing is always the large caps will outperform. Right. Um, Mr. Junior, I'll just one small question because the street is divided around this, which is the fact that the dire predictions around COVID-19 and its impact may be behind us. It is a known known, but the numbers are still very large. Does that worry you? Mr. Nidhar Shah, 25 lakh people get flu in India. And 25 lakh people, and at least 4 lakhs, 25 lakh people have flu in India every day. And at least 4 lakh get through, cured, and 4 lakh join every day. And on a simple calculation, 140 crore Indians, we all have flu for at least 7 days on an average. So we have 10 crore man days of flu. If you divide that by 365 days, 25 lakh Indians have flu every day on average. And if the flu lasts for 7 days, so every day 4 lakh join and 4 lakh leave. So it's, once it is treatable, it will be like another flu. Yeah, sure. It's getting far more treated, treatable. So it's a flu, it's not a cancer. I hold it from day one. Right? So now, one of the reasons why market is going up is that people had made so much, had become so depressed and so apprehensive of the pandemic that the consequences have proven to be far lesser than what they had anticipated. Okay. So I don't think now. I mean, it could happen. I'm no, I'm not by no doctor or right. But I think we will learn to live with it, just like any other flu in time to come. And every preceding day, we learn to treat it better. Sure. No, no, I agree. I was actually not asking you whether. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't ask you to second guess what the impact of the flu would be. But I just wonder whether you believe that that or the India-China situation is a tail risk, which you would maybe make. Provision for in your portfolio as well, or are you not too unduly worried about it? Well, I don't know how to make a provision in my portfolio of the uncertainties, but I personally feel there's not going to be any war between India and China, and surely not in the winter, right? And I don't think there will be a war because the consequences for China, India is not going to ignite a war. India is going to respond, and I think the consequences for China to have a war geopolitically are too severe and their gains are too limited right and now india has also first time shown aggression so china has realized it's not as simple as it seems and we have captured some of the mountain heights right and we are much better prepared and war has no victors only survivors so i'm of the opinion china will not create a war as far as the pandemic is concerned see there are spaces where the pandemic has been very well contained. Korea, Germany, supposedly China, right? So there is going to be variation. But I think worldwide, we, I, I'm not so much afraid that there's going to be a second wave and the second wave is going to be bigger than the first wave because we are very much well prepared. We have medical facilities. We have knowledge. And it may, you know, it may need hurt community. It may need to hurt immunity in the next three, four months. Okay. Okay. Uh, fair call. I would love your thoughts oh, on the ease of doing business. Sir. Sorry, I couldn't. Sorry, sorry. Please finish your point, Mr. Junjun. I just lost you. Please finish your point. I think it's about ease of doing business, no? I think the ease of doing business is a process. It's a journey. It's not a destination. And I think it's improving every day. People are not understanding the implication of the land reforms. 
you know, in, in for milk, there was no control in India for distribution. Anybody could buy from anywhere in any state, sell it anywhere. And today, milk is bigger crop than wheat and rice put together. It's an 8 lakh crore business. And the farmer in India gets the largest part of the price that the consumer pays. So, what is the people are underestimating the effect of the agricultural reform? Yeah. And now with the government, electricity, the electricity reforms which are which are uh, proposed by the government, if they are done, they are path breaking. The government already has the draft tax ready, and Andhra Pradesh is also where the subsidies will not be. Everybody will be built at the rate decided by the regulatory commission, right? And the, everybody will be paid subsidy into the bank accounts. So first of all, theory will go away. Right, because you have to show the bill to get the subsidy. Yeah. And second, I mean, I think they are path paving reforms. And the electricity boards will have to open letters of credit to get money, get power from the private sector players. So this cross-subsidization, where I charge a farmer no mill and I pay for industry at 6 rupees and, you know, for uh, domestic at 12%, uh, at 8 rupees and domestic, uh, I mean, business establishment at 12 rupees, all that will go away. Then we have mining reform. So we'll have the sale of the PSUs. Well, there are a whole host of people who say we've done just the right thing because we didn't need to overstimulate at a point of time and don't stretch the balance sheet. And there's an equal criticism of the same. Where are you and why on this? Because Sanjeev Sanyal did say a few days back that there will be another stimulus, another round of stimulus done at an appropriate time. Where are you on this I think we need a stimulus, but we have to be very careful. We don't need a blind stimulus. Sure. We need a stimulus, but I am more concerned about the longer term policy changes than about the immediate stimulus. I think the longer term policy changes are more important to me than the immediate stimulus. Yeah. Yeah, but but, but would the near term, do you reckon the near term needs uh, some bit of stimulus to tide over? I mean, Anand Mahindra was on record saying that Let's do something for people, not from a market's perspective, but from a living perspective as well. Do you think that should and can happen? And could that hurt the... You know, I think personally, the biggest... If I were to decide, sure. I would give the biggest stimulus for long-term infrastructure projects. Well, that will create employment. Right? We already have a rural employment scheme. We could have an urban employment scheme. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would concentrate. And maybe the worst hit industry will be aligned with hospitality. They require some kind of financial beta. Okay. Um, a follow-up, Mr. Junjunwala, is uh, to your earlier answer. Or earlier answer is uh, is this that uh, we've had the last three four years of the haves doing really well, the powerful firms, and the you know by the polarization that used to happen. If indeed these reforms take shape and form the way they are, Pranab Sen was referring to agri reforms as akin to 1991. Would you reckon that naturally it just opens up a loss to a lot of other investment avenues in areas which were hitherto considered maybe uninvestable or untouchable? Absolutely, that is the power of agricultural reform. The power of agricultural reform is actually I pay 40 rupees a kg for potato, and a farmer gets four rupees. I should get it for 30 and the farmer should get 12. That can be done by having wastage, better efficient system, direct contact with the farmer. See the difference between the price that the farmer realizes, as in the case of milk, and the price that I pay or we pay should go down. And don't forget that India is the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world. The value of the crop of fruits and vegetables is also more than all the cereals put together. Sure. So that is, can you imagine the Maharashtra government has bought 40,000 tons of uh, onion at 4 rupees and they're able to now sell it at 20 rupees. So now when the price of uh, tomato or uh, potato in West Bengal goes to 2 rupees, under the Asian Commodity Act, you couldn't buy it. Not already have storage capacity. And then this would also lead to improvement of farmer of farming activities because those who buy will then help the farmer get a better crop. 
So this is of course un unleashed. And today you read in the papers, India's you know farm exports are around forty three percent. And remember, the value added of farm exports is very very high. As a society, what is important not how much we export economically, what is important, what is the value added? Sure. If I import a diamond for ninety and sell it for hundred, what I get in India is ten. When I export a potato, what I get in India is ninety. Sure. So I think it can be big, and then you know it can be used for food processing. I mean, the unlimited opportunities. See, the opportunities in India are so great, and the skills are so great. Once you create conditions for that to be unleashed, people are underestimate what will happen in this country. Sure. Actually. But just wondering, Mr. Jujunwala, would you reckon that by FY25, when you're talking about you know growth numbers being high too, I was thinking about the CAD math. Now that we have this PLI scheme for electronics, and if indeed electronic imports go down, you mentioned about these agri reforms and what they could do. These are doing business. You see, this is going to come in a you know in a form once one company comes. Ah. Uh -huh. Right. In a very simple factor, you know, first of all, India. There are tariffs. India is a large market, right? So if I if I'm Apple, if I produce and I'm selling one million phones in India, then I can produce one million. So it's better for me to then produce two million more in India to export because I have big local market. Sure. And then once you have the reform of labor, land is available with all the state governments. They're all fighting to get manufacturing, right? Electricity is available, labor is available, local market is there. Why will not people come? I don't think people will come because they want to get out of China. People will come despite China. Okay. But by your answers, then, Mr. Junjunwala, it seems that you believe that uh, on the macro print as well, whether the whether the CAD numbers or otherwise, will do much much better than what we've done in the past 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. I believe so. Okay. Uh, the other question, and in, in relation to the earlier answer that you gave, the lines still now seem to be firmly drawn. People prefer pharma, uh, technology, specialty chemicals. Those businesses are at the forefront. By broadening of this move that we're talking about, you reckon that the favorites could change? It's going to be a relay race, boss. <laughs> it's going to be a relay race. Everybody's going to participate by turn. Okay. Okay, but, but I want to have a market I envisage. Uh -huh. Everything we want to participate. Okay. Can I can I ask you? I've I've heard you in the last two three months on a number of occasions, and you sounded extremely bullish on India becoming, if not the factory of the world, then amongst the largest producers in a lot of spaces, software, pharma, etc. Uh, you reckon that even if others are participating, uh, these should be the core part of portfolios? I mean, are they a core part of your portfolio for the I'm next few years? What your, what your portfolio should be. I'm not sure. So what about your... No, I can only give yeah. my views. Right? Sure. See, we must understand one thing. 40% of all medicines eaten in America. 40% of every medicine eaten in America is made in. Now, you cannot recreate this kind of industry. Without knowledge, costs, and you can have a large export industry. Provided you have a large, a large sustainable competitive export industry, not based just on wage costs. Only if you have a large local market. And by Ricardo's theory of exports, you have advantage in the industry. You get export, then the advantage, then the advantage increases. So you get size, it further increases. So I think. Everything in India, boss, if we unleash the forces, I think defense manufacturing in India, if it comes, it can be big. We can be big exporters of defense hardware. Right? And now defense hardware is going to be more and more technology based. For which Indians are well uh, suited. Because it's going to be mainly software, which is going to be very important. So when you think of it, the apartheid or not, we only to create the conditions where we have ease of doing business. Oh, which it's not easy, but we are doing it, trying. Anything worries you, Mr. Junjunwala? 
what worries me is Pakistan nuclear bomb, nothing else. So that's a failed state. Beyond that, it can be delayed, it cannot be denied. And we have to realize that we go into equity investment with a lot of uncertainty. So the unknown uncertainties are always there. I mean, what can we do by worrying about them? Of course. No, no, I, I, I understand. But I was just wondering if uh, in such a bullish picture that you're painting, or at least you believe in, um, what if, what I is the... That, uh, I believe that Mr. Modi's continuation as a prime minister is very important. So that all that he is informed, all that he has envisaged is implemented. Hmm. And he should have the, we should have the political, or someone should have the political uh, power and the will in India to push down these reforms. The labor reform we are trying to do for the last 20 years. This agriculture reform, government has notified five years ago, but the state governments are not implementing it at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, but I think your base case is that these would now get done because this government is showing the will to be able to do it even more stronger than any, any time before. Yeah, they pushed the agriculture and the labor reform. They'll push the electricity reforms also. Got it. They're doing nothing in mining. Even in environment, we have to be very careful about the environment. There's no question. But you know, it doesn't have to be a blockade. If you have to build a Bombay coastal state and you got to acquire 20 hectares, land 50 acres, I think we should be allowed to do it. Yeah. And we lose some bloody uh, floral of, uh, you know, one, one meter in Haji Ali. I don't see any reason why you should not make the road for that kind of fun up. So I think okay. we must respect the environment, but we have to be reasonable. I think that's what the government is trying to do.